With so much ultra-processed food around, eating well has never been more important, especially for the older athlete. But for me, it's about staying healthy as I get older, so I can do this sort of thing. So in this video, we'll go through the food I choose and the snacks that I choose. I'm not saying what I do is right for you, but I'm saying it might give you a few ideas that you'll want to incorporate. In the previous video, I explained my approach to avoiding ultra-processed food, to glucose control, and to time-restricted eating, which I do three or four days a week. Before a long or hard workout, I'll eat a slice or two of toast spread with organic almond butter. But if I'm eating in a 10-hour window, breakfast is late. I like porridge, but monitoring showed it spiked my glucose, so I only eat it before exercise, like a long ride when my muscles can use the extra glucose. So this is a typical breakfast. Kefir is a fermented probiotic, Greek yogurt or skier yogurt for more protein, and a particular granola from Marks & Spencer that I've tested and doesn't cause glucose spikes for me. Two fresh fruit, kiwi and blueberries today, a handful of pumpkin and sunflower seeds that we keep out for snacking, and a small handful of nuts. They all get mixed together and that is quite a bowlful. I will substantially reduce quantities if I ate toast earlier. But this breakfast keeps me going until well into the afternoon. Some days we might have eggs for breakfast, but this is a pretty typical breakfast for us. I think there's a good mix of healthy fats and protein in this, um, although if I've had a really heavy session in the gym, then I probably would have a protein shake. But that's something I try to avoid simply because it falls into the category of ultra-processed food. This doesn't. The eggs we get could not be fresher. Two eggs is a regular lunch, fried or scrambled or poached. And we have another favorite, a bean salad with lots of bits from the fridge. I'll mix half a jar of two different beans or chickpeas with what I find. Today it's some red cabbage, a red onion, small tomatoes, a pepper, and we have pomegranate seeds from last night's meal. The white wine vinegar and mint make a dressing. Wash and drain the beans, then chop everything, the cabbage, onions, tomatoes, and put it all in a bowl. Add the beans and the chickpeas, mix it all together. Chop the mint and put it in a bowl with half a teaspoon of salt, a grind of pepper, and a glug of white wine vinegar. Add some extra virgin olive oil, stir, and leave to sit. At lunchtime, take a couple of handfuls of the salad, the pomegranate seeds if you have them, and a generous helping of dressing. I'm adding some mixed seeds from breakfast for added crunch. This also makes an excellent packed lunch if you're traveling because it all just fits into a container. It's packed with protein, but I will find myself sometimes adding a can of tuna. I also find I sometimes want a slice of bread, uh, but as I said in the previous video, I found a Marks & Spencer's sourdough that doesn't spike my blood glucose. So we tend to buy a few of those loaves, whack them in the freezer. I think the two main risks with time-restricted eating are you snack too much within your eating window and overeat, and that you don't consume enough protein, which is increasingly important as we age. So we have a box of unflavored protein powder ready to go and can add this to breakfast or have it mixed with some milk. There's always fruit handy. Those mixed seeds you've already seen, they're always out. I see we've got some sprouts out today. And our snack box is full of mixed nuts rather than biscuits. We do have a biscuit tin, but we try not to open it until after dinner. I have already made quite a few videos of recipes for the kind of meals that we like to eat, and I'll put those in the same playlist as this one in case you want to find them. But I will include in this video our current favorite recipe because it is super easy, incredibly tasty, and you can get all the prep done before you go out for your bike ride or your run, as I have done, and then whack it in the oven for 30 minutes when you get back, and that's it. It's my kind of meal. This is what we're going to make, tomato and chickpeas with roasted fennel with a lump of fish or meat on top. 
You need this, small and large tomatoes, basil, a lemon, two fennel bulbs or one big one, chili flakes, fennel seeds, balsamic vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, chickpeas, the jars are best, maple syrup and a jar of olives. The original recipe is from Yotomoto Lenghi and uses seven peeled garlic cloves as well. I've missed them out. Wash the chickpeas and leave the water to drain. Chop the big tomatoes across their equators and a few of the small ones too. Leave most of the little ones whole. Put these in a baking tin lined with baking paper. Top and tail the fennel, then cut each bulb into at least six pieces lengthwise. This also goes into the baking tin. Add the chickpeas and put the peeled garlic in now if you're using it. 35 ml of balsamic vinegar, I just guess, 70 ml of extra virgin olive oil and two caps of maple syrup or use runny honey. A big teaspoonful of salt and quite a lot of black pepper. Then get your hands in and mix it all up until everything is coated. Arrange the bits so nothing is on top of anything else and there are plenty of edges to char and soften. That's part one done. For part two, get a small pan hot. This one is smoking and I sprinkle in some fennel seeds. It takes seconds for these to toast. You probably shouldn't do it this way, but get the pan straight off the heat and put the seeds to one side. Part three is about chopping. A handful or two of black olives and chop them. Initially they roll around a lot, but you can quickly tackle that and then leave them fairly chunky. I'm using all the basil from the pack here, getting it fairly small. Then I mix it with the olives. Juice the lemon, then this goes into the bowl, along with an even bigger glug of extra virgin olive oil. Half a teaspoon of salt, this is low sodium stuff, a grind of pepper, a few of the toasted fennel seeds. And that is done. Now you can head out for a ride. Turn the oven up to 240 or 220 if it's a fan when you get back and then when you get out of the shower, bung in the baking tray. 30 minutes later it comes out soft, charred and delicious. Scoop it into bowls, add a good helping of the basil and olive dressing, especially over the tomatoes, sprinkle on the fennel seeds and this is enough for a great meal. We eat fish twice a week and I've seasoned a tuna steak that I cut in half widthways. It goes into a very hot ridge pan. You can smell it start to sear and see the side cooking. When it's halfway through, I flip the steak, turn off the heat and cover the pan so the trapped heat slowly cooks the rest. Adding the tuna to this meal isn't necessary, but it is delicious. In the course of making these videos, I've realized that I could be doing an awful lot better. Today, for example, I really should be eating more protein. There could be an element of Dunning-Kruger effect going on here. So I encourage you to seek out your own information. Use this as a starting point, And I'll put a list of the resources that I've used in the video description and also on this link. When this series returns, I'll describe my strength exercises and I'll seek out a trainer to improve that form. Then it's my mix of cycle and other training to improve aerobic efficiency and capacity. Please subscribe for these and the other adventure videos I'm also making. Until next time, goodbye.